Hello gardeners and plant parents. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor. And on this channel, we take that science and we apply it to all things gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds up, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and join our awesome crew because we are amazing over here and we're all about the questions and the discussions. So let's start this video off with a question. Let me know in the comments below, have you cross pollinated or have you self-pollinated in the past? What crosses have you made? Do you always self-pollinate? How do you self-pollinate? Do you use Q-tips? Do you use vibrators? I know that sounds crazy, but it's completely legitimate. Or do you just simply take the filaments and anthers and place it on the style and stigma of the female portions of the flower to pollinate? Let me know. I'd be interested to know what you guys use. In today's video, we're going to be talking about pollination. Ta-da! And we're going to be talking about specifically whether or not you need to self-pollinate, why you have so many male flowers and no female flowers, exactly what I do in the garden. Of course, it's going to have a science spin to it. So we're going to be getting into the literal mechanisms, the organs, and everything else in between because it's a science channel. That's what we do on the science channel. So let's get into it. In order to understand what we need to do for self-pollination, whether or not it's viable, we have to know what kind of plant we have. So there's two types. There's the monos and there's the dyes. The mono plants have two different types of flowers, an imperfect flower and a perfect flower, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But the dyes have either a male plant or a female plant. And the male plant is going to have male flowers and the female plant is going to have female flowers. And you need one of each plant in order to achieve pollination. And this is very common in things like trees and bushes. There's another one that kind of looks like this, a tomato plant, a specific type of tomato plant that also has a male or a female. Now there are hermaphrodites, meaning varieties or types that have both organs on it, but this is less desirable for a lot of people because it can interfere with the type of pollination that takes place. So just a fun fact. The ones we're talking about today are the monos. And the reason we're talking about these is because these are the most common types of flower styles to see. There's perfect flowers and there's imperfect flowers. Perfect flowers have both the male and the female portions of the plant. Imperfect has male plants, male flowers, and female flowers. So that is something like your squash or your pumpkin. Now, a mono plant that cross pollinating is nearly impossible to do is the grass family. And I know this because I used to work in research and development for wheat breeding, and it is a total pain in the butt. Grasses, because the inflorescence are kind of enclosed in on each other, it has both the male and the female parts portions completely folded in itself. Because of that, you actually have to go in, cut open the inflorescence or the fluorescence of that plant, remove the male portions of it, leaving the female portions behind. And it's just, it's a huge process because grasses are designed to do like 98% self-pollination. So that's just a fact. And it makes sense because they are so well adapted to the environment around them. You look outside and it's all grass. So, I mean, obviously. So perfect flowers, you may notice that sometimes the style, the stigma and the pollen tube are taller than the filaments and the anthers, meaning the female portion is above the male portion. And there's a reason for this. Plant does not want to self pollinate. We'll get into that a bit later. With the imperfect flowers, you will notice you have a ton of male flowers and no female flowers. Why is that? Again, the plant knows what it's doing it's designed to do it so why why are these plants designing their flowers to make sure that self-pollination doesn't take place and why are they blooming males and not females well it comes down to evolution and these plants are smart mother nature knows what she's doing guys we don't have to interfere the reason that this happens is because they want genetic diversity they want to be cross-pollinated and the reason for this has to do with survival if you are able to cross-pollinate and have multiple sources of phenotypes and genetics genetic information coming into your ovum and fertilizing all your little seeds inside of that ovum then you're going to have a better chance of offspring that's going to survive the next year so let's take the example of a ginger flower 
I'm not good with drought. I'm not good with sun. I'm not good with not enough water or heat or anything in the nature. So if you cross me with another ginger flower, we're not going to survive a hot summer. And if we have a very hot summer or multiple hot summers in a row, my genetic line will eventually disappear. However, if you cross pollinate me with a flower or a succulent or a cacti, for example, that is better adapted to drought and heat and etc. and so forth, then what's going to happen, I'm going to have offspring that may survive a hot summer and therefore my genetic line survives. Now, there is a lot of misconception about cross-pollinating. You cannot cross-pollinate across species. It just simply does not work. It has to be between varieties. So if you have a pumpkin that looks like a cucumber, it has very little to do with cross-pollination and it most likely has to do with environmental factors, meaning you bumped the plant, sunlight, watering, fertilizer, that sort of thing, or you got it from a seed trading situation or you tried to do seed saving for the first time or you just got a bad luck from a seed, like from the company you purchased the seeds from and they had a cross-pollinated variety and they didn't ensure self-pollination and the QC and stuff is a mess. That is literally the only two options. The fruit that you get this summer or this fall has nothing to do with what pollen was put into that plant and everything to do with the mother plant and how it was engineered to grow. That is it, that is all. Those franken fruits you see have nothing to do with self-pollination, zero. So if we know that plants are developed to cross-pollinate for survival reasons and mother nature has put this into place because it is incredibly valuable to happen, do you as a gardener need to self-pollinate? And the simple answer is if you're literally just trying to get food to eat and can and enjoy, then no, you don't have to self-pollinate because you're not going to use that seed next year to grow. However, if you are thinking about seed saving, then self-pollination may be a good idea. But if you are self-pollinating to get viable seed the next year, your cucumber is a long English cucumber because it came off a long English cucumber plant and you don't want pickling cucumbers mixed in with it, then you're gonna wanna make sure you're doing some pretty heavy duty quality control on your end. You're gonna wanna make sure that those female flowers have zero exposure to the outside world because every single seed inside of the ovule, and I'll pop up a photo of what that looks like, every single one of those can be pollinated with pollen. So if anything hits that style stigma and goes down that pollen tube on that flower while it's flowering and reaches one of those ovules, there is a chance you will have a hybrid or a cross. If you don't want this to happen because you want to seed save or you want to start a seed selling company, you need to ensure that that female flower has zero exposure to the outside world. So whether that be a netting or a nylon, something, whatever it is that you wrap around it, that is the only way that you can ensure that you are 100% self-pollinated because despite what you may believe, cross-pollination is literally happening nonstop all day, every day. Even if you don't see it, I promise you it's happening. Some fun things you can do with cross-pollination is you can make your own varieties. And this is getting more into the science and the Punnett square and phenotypes and how they work. If you guys want a video on that, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'd love to do one, but it's going to be intense. So I don't want to include it here. And I'm not sure if you guys are interested in getting into that depth. So just let me know and I can definitely do a video on it. But essentially, a Punnett square, in simple terms, was originally developed with peas, so using snap peas. And the reason for using snap peas is because the turnaround was so fast. So um, it began with the actual pea pods, so the peas that were developed, wrinkly versus perfectly round. And what the scientist did is he essentially would see characteristics in the plant and ones that he wanted to harness. And so a crinkly pod versus a smooth pod. And he would cross the plants with each other to be able to get offspring. And from that offspring, he'd see what, what, what showed up and what didn't in the offspring of the plant. 
This would help him identify things like recessive genes versus dominant genes, and therefore he could make freaking fruits as he went. Now, this isn't bad. This isn't you being irresponsible if you allow crosses to happen. This is nature. This is normal. So don't be thinking you're making freaking fruits and GMO. This isn't GMO. That's like a whole other thing. You're simply making a hybrid. That's what it would be called. So you can do this with flowers. You can do this with vegetables. You can do this with indoor plants, whatever the case is, as long as you have a flower on it, you can make your own crosses. But again, it has to be within the same species and it can only be between varieties. Why do you not have a lot of female flowers? Well, it's because that's what the plant was designed to do. Do you need to worry about not having a bunch of female flowers? It completely depends on what you're trying to do. If you are just trying to get a pumpkin for this fall, you do not need to worry about the number of male to female flowers you have. I can guarantee you everything will be fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you've experimented with making your own hybrids, what kind of hybrids you've made, and I will see you guys next time.